the unfortunate things that we might be finding ourselves in is becoming culturized by the culture and eliminating the gospel. You see, the gospel is not transient. It's eternal. The gospel that is preached is not just something that is going to make you feel good. The gospel is going to call you out right where you are. The gospel has never been meant to make sure that you are comfortable with being who you are, but the gospel is calling us to become who we are called to be. When Paul writes Roman, he doesn't write it because he's going to Rome then. He's writing it because his heart is so in love with the people in Rome of the church that he wants to impart everything he can to them that they might know who they are in Jesus. Brethren, in the new NIV now it says brethren and sister. Now, I can't argue with that. And the reason I can't argue that because when Paul closes the book of Romans, he lists a number of women that he's acknowledging. Amen? And then he lists the men. So in reality, to say brother and sister is truly scriptural sound because that's who he was talking to when he concludes the book. But here he says, brethren, my hearts and desire and prayer to God for Israel it's not that they get rich. <laughs> not that they have a lot of money. Have everything going their way. Not that things are perfect in their lives, but my hearts and desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. <laughs> I was listening to a preacher now who is saying he was preaching the wrong thing. Uh, he didn't know where he was with salvation. And I really don't know what his doctrine was with tithing. But he felt like he had to backtrack. He had taught wrong tithing. And one, by, one, some, one somebody said that they ought to be like Zacchaeus. Well, when he had stolen from the people, he gave it back. <laughs> They were saying, well, now that you've recognized what your wrong is, you may want to give that money back. And in fact, you ought to give it back an institution amount as well. We didn't hear any response from that. But anyway, God's purpose of, our, of Jesus' coming was not to make us rich. It was to give us abundant living. Now, if you got, just happen to get rich, that's fine. Ain't nothing wrong with being rich, right? But if we preach a gospel that is calling people to economic wealth and justice here and justice there, that's an addendum to the gospel. That ain't the gospel. <laughs> Paul recognized that Israel had a zeal for God. But they were ignorant. <laughs> this concept of substituting stuff for the gospel of Jesus Christ that makes, brings us into righteousness, this concept of substituting stuff is not new is the, is the point. Paul was responding to everything that the church may have done or was possibly going to do to substitute Jesus being the true savior of the world. He did not bend on that. You know, there's a lot of things we have to change as Christian communicating, right? But let me say something to you. When you get to the point of compromising that Jesus Christ is the savior of the world, then maybe I'll shut on and leave the church alone. <laughs> maybe it's time to close our doors because the only thing that's going to change the direction that the world is going in is that we're preaching Jesus is the Christ, 
the son of the living God. Now, if we change that message, then Jesus becomes a fake. I am the way, the truth and the life. <laughs> no man comes to the Father but by me. Now, if he said it and we believe it, then we can't change that word to accommodate those who are around us. At some point, we need to stand up for who God has called us to be. Because the world needs you and I to be the example that God has called us to be.